Euroland, a magical world where fantasies come true. Boring, old-fashioned values have no place here. Sovereignty, democracy and honesty give way to the temptations of the European dream. Bureaucrats and politicians alike are entranced. Euroland is the glorious future. You'd be mad to resist. In that case, some 46% of the British people must be mad as hatters. Why else would they want to leave the European Union? They fear that Euroland is stealing their hard-won right to elect and dismiss the people who make their laws. By that, I mean their democracy, and I'm one of them. E no, io non sono un piccolo inglesino. Amo e rispetto tutti i paesi della vera Europa. Quello che mi fa paura è il pazzo progetto dell'Unione Europea, che è una cosa molto differente. So, I want the answer to one very simple question. What is the point of the European Union? If anyone can show me how it benefits the people of Europe, as opposed to the fat Eurocrats, then I'll shut up. What is Euroland for? Well, what we're always told is peace and prosperity. Our membership of the European Union costs us well over 60 million pounds a day. So we'd better be sure that answer stacks up. The European Union was born of an honourable but misguided idea that nation states were to blame for the carnage of two world wars. So the plan was to emasculate and dilute the nation states into a supranational government run by a commission of wise technocrats. The trouble is, history shows it's democracy, not integration, which safeguards peace. And the EU is scarcely a very democratic outfit. I've never agreed with some of the older generation who said we must believe in Europe because of peace. In that I think at the end of the Second World War and given the growth of the communist system and the divide between the Soviet Union and the West, there was never going to be another war within Western Europe. Um, so that was an honourable principle. But I think all of that argument is overtaken, historical, not relevant anymore, and we must look afresh at what the EU is for. So much for peace. What about that other great myth of Euroland? That the EU is good for prosperity. Belgo, a popular restaurant serving Belgian food to Londoners. For 30 years, our political leaders and media have told us that membership of the European Union is vital to our national interest. So let's see what the owner thinks about the famous prosperity which Brussels brings us. If you dig into the facts, you'll see that over 80% of our gross domestic product is domestic trade. In fact, it's really only 9% of our total economy that depends on the EU. Moreover, we actually have a trade deficit with the EU, so I think it's highly unlikely that European countries within the EU would cease to trade with us if we left the EU, since actually they enjoy a surplus with us. The staggering fact is that 80% of our new laws are now cooked up by the European Union. The longer we stay in, the more we are forced to accept the social and labour costs imposed on us by the EU. Why can't we swap our ruinous membership for simple free trade? <laughs> the British people don't yet know that they have a fight on their hands if they want to save their democracy. The EU already has its own parliament, executive, supreme court, currency, flag and anthem. The proposed new written constitution will deliver the knockout blow. Boxing promoter Frank Maloney is taking the fight to Euroland. Frank, isn't it really very frightening that the British people know so little about our present subservience to the European Union? It is frightening because, you know, our government do not explain the policies of or the laws that are brought in. Until it is explained to the ordinary person out in the street, um, we will never know what is done in the, the corridors of Brussels and behind closed doors. Also because the British people will only be able to elect and sack members of the House of Commons, sack our own parliamentarians. 
but these laws will be being made in Brussels, and our Parliament will just become a rubber stamp, won't it? Well, I was just, unfortunately for us, our Parliament will be um, useless. All they will do is just sit there and, and be like nodding dogs in the back of a car for the European Union. So why are our politicians running scared of debate? No major party will even talk about the possibility of withdrawal. Only a few backbenchers are prepared to stick their necks out. The assumption that we must be members of the European Union no matter what it does to our country is an absurd one. If we were ever to reach a point where we believe that our membership of the European Union is damaging this country, if it is causing us harm as a country, not just economically, but also constitutionally, if we're, if we're losing democratic control over our own affairs, if we are handing power to people whom we cannot elect and unelect, then I think that must raise the question of why are we in Europe at all. Do you think we've reached that point already? Yes, I think we may well be there. So, what is the point of the European Union? Well, the point was supposed to be a single market that would benefit firms in Europe in investing because they'd have the guarantee of a single market. And I think there's something still in that. When they start regulating the sausages and the ice cream and the... Food supplements. It just becomes unbearable. It's time we all shook the tree and said, you'd better stop all this regulation or we're going to bring this whole thing grinding to a halt. I still haven't discovered the point of the EU. No one from the Commission would agree to talk to me. So, I'm on my way to meet the lady who helped negotiate the proposed new constitution for the Labour Party. She still thinks that the people are up to speed on the project overall. My experience is that the people actually are very shrewd and they do know what's going on. Uh, and their silence very often is a consent. But 40 to 50 percent of the British people already want to get out of the European Union. I haven't heard figures which are as high as you suggest, 40 percent. I had really thought figures are around sort of 10 to 15 percent, which when you uh, think, but shaking your head, sir, probably I'm wrong. But it, I think these opinion polls are, are, are very difficult. If you explain to them what it precisely would mean to leave the European Union, and go through the consequences of that. I think most of them will come to the conclusion that the Union as a political construction is capable of significant improvement, but is also something that is worth holding on to. And so, which do you choose? The dangerous fantasy of Euroland or real democracy? You don't have to be an extremist to want to leave the European Union whatever the Europhiles pretend. It would be a liberating, positive and modern thing to do. And we would be very much richer as well. It is time to wake up.